All right, hello and welcome to this RCR Wireless News webinar entitled LTE Solutions for Utility Vehicles. Thank you so much for joining us. This 60 minute webinar brings together a panel of industry experts from Cradlepoint and INS to discuss solutions using LTE in mobile and remote locations. The speakers today will discuss a specific application in the oil field and how that solution can be applied in other mobile environments. My name's Ben Stone, I'm with RCR Wireless News, and I'd like to review a few housekeeping items with our audience before we begin. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the Zoom webinar interface. In terms of Q&A, can you please uh, request that you indicate which panelist, Ken or Steven, of who you'd like to ask the questions to. As a note, a recording of this panel will be available on demand after the conclusion, and you'll receive an email in regards to this. Now allow me to introduce today's speakers and get the webinar started. So today we will be joined by Stephen Maman, Principal Solutions Architect, and Ken Hozak, VP of IoT Strategy. Stephen joins us from Industrial Networking Solutions based in Dallas, Texas. INS was founded in 1998 and is one of the pioneers of the industrial ethernet marketplace. INS continues to distribute products, provide network engineering services, and training designed specifically for the industrial marketplace. Ken joins us from Cradlepoint, based in Boise, Idaho, founded in 2006. Cradlepoint has grown to become the industry leader in cloud-delivered 4G LTE network solutions for business, service providers, and government organizations, and are committed to extending their leadership into the emerging 5G space. Welcome both to today's webinar, and with that, I'd like to pass it over to Steven to kick us off. Okay, thanks, Ben. Uh, as Ben said, I'm Steven, I'm with INS, and uh, the goal for today's uh, webinar, from my standpoint, is to present a very specific use case uh, relating to the oil and gas market and uh, reflect how we um, accomplish some specific uh, feats regarding the uh, challenges that you can see with, with mobile uh, deployments. Uh, this is specific to the oil and gas market. I, I plan on leaning on Ken to kind of help broaden the horizon and uh, give us a better, uh, larger picture view. So specifically, uh, with the oil and gas market, as we all are aware, it's in a healthy rebound. Uh, competition is increasing. And uh, with uh, this specific customer, they're an upstream provider. So their product centers are really everywhere. So the key to their uh, competitive edge is connectivity management and having really strong remote connectivity to all their sites, all their job sites, all their workforce. Uh, as we know, this isn't a given and uh, connectivity to everywhere is, is, is rather difficult to accomplish uh, well. Uh, to further break down this specific customer, they are a uh, well oil well conditions, uh, measuring and mon monitoring service provider. Uh, they operate a fleet of 50 line trucks, 50 plus line trucks. Uh, these are basically uh, mobile workforces, mobile job sites uh, deployed to wherever uh, their services are, are needed. Uh, like, historically, these uh, sites did not have internet connectivity. Uh, they were basically isolated. So field engineers are, engineers are deployed at all these sites and uh, they are monitoring the condition of the wells and uh, making sure that everything is operating efficiently. Uh, the problem arose when uh, these field engineers, sometimes junior engineers, would run into an issue. Uh, they're basically on an island and they would have to, if a problem arose, they would have to reach out to a central point of contact, a more senior engineer, they would have to then engage that person. And this is truly sort of a break fix model. Something's gone down. Now they're going to escalate to a senior engineer, typically centrally located at headquarters or a main office location for this uh, customer's service center. And that senior engineer would then uh, start a phone troubleshooting scenario where they are trying to look into uh, what is not operating correctly, maybe doing a remote session if possible, uh, working through issues on the phone, doing the best they could. But at the end of the day, a lot of times, uh, if if push came to shove and the issue couldn't be resolved in a timely manner to 
keep revenue uh, flowing for this particular site, it would result in a lengthy drive out to a remote site so that they could uh, resolve the issue and, and get, the, that, get that site back up and running. So this is a very kind of specific mobile workforce environment uh, that's geared towards uh, the oil and gas market. Now, I know this is a common problem and I wanted to see, uh, Ken, how does this apply to other industries, not oil and gas? Yeah, I think the uh, the key point is every business that has these remote locations, there's a certain cost of a truck roll is what they call, or in some cases, cost of a plane roll. And in retail, for example, or branch office, cost of truck roll can range from 600 to 800 to 1200 dollars uh, each roll. And so, it's really important to understand as you kind of design your system uh, and and figure out what kind of equipment you want to deploy to make that trade off, so you're getting the um, you know, the best, most affordable solution, factoring everything in like that. Okay. So with this particular customer, uh, you know, the non-internet connectivity state was not going to be a long-term approach. With uh, competition increasing, the proliferation of LTE build-out, uh, they knew there had to be a better way to accomplish their goals. Uh, in addition, there were some initiatives on the horizon, including real-time on-site invoicing, which basically precludes uh, internet connectivity everywhere. Um, they assessed uh, you know, consumer-grade options, which can sometimes seem like the easy button, but things like uh, mobile hotspots are, are, are kind of limited. Uh, you know, as you guys know, there, there's a lot of limitations in, as far as antenna arrays, both to the connection back to the LTE tower for signal strength, uh, the Wi-Fi coverage for a mobile workforce or a vehicle area network is not really up to snuff. So at best, you're using it as an uplink or combining it with other hardware, but you're not really getting an all-in-one embedded solution. You don't get enterprise router feature sets uh, typically with these kind of solutions. And if you did roll this out to 50 plus sites, you have 50 plus isolated network configurations and really no cohesive management strategy. Yeah, one thing so, I'd add real quick on the consumer versus enterprise is one of the things we found with the consumer USB modem sticks is that the enterprise doesn't control the firmware upgrade for the modem. Uh, whereas on, on you know, our solution, the enterprise class solution, the enterprise is in control of when upgrades happen so that you can test them out. And we've had situations where People have implemented a consumer grade solution and a firmware upgrade was pushed out by the operator because that's what they do with consumer devices that caused problems out in the field that had to be fixed with a truck roll. So it's it's a really important consideration. Thanks, Jen. Uh, so to summarize the the customers' requirements, you know, basically they came to INS and and laid out this story for us and and painted uh, what the picture was of an optimal network, and they really didn't uh, pull any punches here. So these are remote locations. They needed a reliable uplink, and they also needed to look at ways to have an, a highly available uplink while also being uh, affordable and cost conscious because these are always on activities when these vehicles are deployed. Uh, next, they have centralized their infrastructure to a data center type architecture, so they really needed a VPN uh, technology and feature set that could leverage uh, a good LTE connection uh, back to their data center at all times and, and work in concert with, uh, with whatever available WAN connections were at the mobile site. Uh, next, they had to have really a highly secure solution to both secure the mobile work site from intrusion, as well as the mobile workers from, you know, web access, uh, you know, streaming activities, phishing activities, because this is really the heart of their revenue generation is out at these edge sites. So they had to really be uh, protective of that land. And finally, the vehicle area network I referred to earlier really centers around Wi-Fi uh, characteristics and specifications. It has to be enterprise class, uh, as far as security goes, and they also tacked on the requirement to have sort of a depot Wi-Fi backhaul 
when this vehicle was at a maintenance facility so that they could leverage, you know, getting off the LTE connection and do any data offloads that they need to uh, if in case that van or that vehicle was at the depot for uh, a longer amount of time. Uh, furthermore, uh, the company had been exploding personnel-wise. Uh, their numbers grew by 1,600% in two years. However, the IT department was still a very lean department. Um, they had to work efficiently. Uh, the technology that they were looking for, they wanted to be able to manage centrally and with uh, a few employees and, and perhaps leverage uh, INS as a partner as well. Um, so the, the question is, how do we manage all these solutions everywhere? They, they needed central management. Uh, what solution could provide all the, ca the capabilities they were looking for? Uh, so we went through a requirements matrix and looked through uh, products, and we kind of quickly narrowed down to, to a choice. Um, you'll see this quote in blue, uh, some feedback from our customer. As we started tacking on all these requirements, most solutions weren't going to meet all of our needs. So the solution uh, really centered around the cradle point IBR 1700. So starting there, I'm going to quickly just build this uh, architecture chart out so you can see how we met all these requirements. The IBR 1700 is the hub of this uh, entire solution for a line truck. Uh, this provides us the VPN connectivity. Uh, it is all centrally managed via NetCloud Manager, which is part of the larger NetCloud ecosystem from cradle point. Uh, the features that this particular customer uh, subscribed to were uh, CP Secure Threat Management, which is an offering uh, for intrusion detection and intrusion prevention uh, from Trend Micro that uh, Cradle Point integrates with. And finally, CP Secure Web Filter, which is a application and uh, content filtering uh, software service that runs through the NetCloud infrastructure. So it's a very impressive feature set, really all rolled into one solution. Um, with any good network, it's something you just want to rely on. You don't want to talk about it all that much unless you're on a webinar. Uh, but the customer said, the connectivity really provided us a foundation that we could then provide other tools on top of. So to talk a little bit more about this solution package, uh, the core IBR 1700 solution package is a dual LTE modem package uh, that has all the features you see listed here, which I've, which I've gone over before. Uh, the enter enterprise class Wi-Fi, uh, IPsec VPN, which has uh, router feature sets within the modem and the NetCloud operating system to really define how we create this tunnel, under what conditions does it go out, which path, uh, in addition, we have the IDS and IPS solution, the web filtering, and of course, it's all centrally managed via NetCloud. Now, this customer was very kind of an early adopter of really all cradle point technology. So really, across the lifespan of the project, which is still active, they switched from a uh, package uh, that was a hardware package to cradle points shifted in strategy to a solution package. What was nice about this from the purchasing standpoint uh, for our customer is it was a all-in-one feature set uh, when they purchased the NetCloud Advanced or sometimes referred to as the Enterprise Solution Package. It included all of these features and all of these software subscriptions uh, for the term that they specified at the time of purchase. So instead of, uh, you can imagine, buying a bunch of a la carte services uh, from multiple vendors for IDS, IPS, or web filtering, they could go to one place, manage it in one place, purchase it as one SKU, and really make logistics a whole lot easier for them. Uh, so this was a, a kind of a change in strategy for uh, Cradle Point, uh, you know, it was an adjustment for the customer and for INS as well, but it's been very well received and, and really greatly simplified everything. So I, I wanted to see from Ken, uh, what have you had similar transitions with other customers and, and, and how is this solution package offering? How is it being received? 
Yeah, thanks. It's it, no, it's been fantastically received by the market. I think what we found, and this change we made was really a result of customer feedback that said, "Look, it's it's kind of complicated trying to understand. I, I get the hardware, but I really don't necessarily understand all of the software and services that are on the, um, you know, the menu that I have to go through and figure out and understand." And it really uh, made the the process of selecting which solution you want more difficult for the customer. And so by consolidating these into a solution package, you buy a single SKU and you get everything. And you don't necessarily need to figure out everything from day one. Uh, we also built a customer success group that will work with our customers to even post-sale after you buy it to help customers understand what functionality that they have in their their bundle that uh, that they might not be using and, and try to get more value. So we find that there's tremendous value in the software and services that we wrap around the hardware, and we wanted to make sure that it was easier to access that value. Awesome. So really, I mean, the most of the value that this particular customer was looking for was cloud management, uh, and, and that sounds like a simplistic term, but really, net cloud manager uh, is really the deployment pane and management pane for all the solutions that I mentioned earlier. So this is that uh, quintessential single pane of glass offering from CradlePoint. Uh, to highlight a few of the features that this uh, manager offering provides, and I'll, I'll touch on these later with some, with some uh, screenshots that you can see how this stuff is uh, uh, relayed to the customer in a graphical form, but they have uh, asset mapping, which is uh, great for, for mobile workforces. You get detailed WAN statistics for health and uptime. You can control all your operating system updates for the net cloud routers, all the cradle point hardware. Uh, it truly is a zero touch uh, configuration and they have device and group uh, kind of constructs there for you, be, for you to be able to manage your configurations uh, with a high level of granularity. You can uh, deploy security updates in the case of IDS and IPS. You can see what your signature databases are at. And then they also provide uh, very important insights to LTE for mobile users. Any metered connection, you really need to understand your data usage profile so that you can uh, optimize how you purchase data, how you use data, and uh, get client device insights so that you can maybe see where there are some anomalies that you need to address uh, whether they're machine-based or personnel-based in some cases. Mm, furthermore, to talk about the security, built into the firewall is the multi-zone, uh, built into the router is the multi-zone firewall solution. Uh, the UTM uh, is provided via these add-on software services, which were included in the enterprise package. Uh, and the web content filtering is a uh, web root-based uh, offering called CP Secure Web Filter. So we, we comb the market looking for a box that can really offer all of these in a cohesive offering, uh, some solution that was all glued together. Uh, and, and this was the only one we could find. Uh, you could tack on you know, various DNS filtering options to, to a router, but it really wasn't an all-in-one solution uh, unless you looked at this uh, cradle point offering. So really, this is where we got a lot of, um, you know, a lot of momentum with this customer, looking at ways that we could provide, as I said earlier, a very available and a very affordable uh, cellular uplink for these remote locations. Uh, it's not a guarantee that carrier A or carrier B will be active where, wherever a truck is deployed. So the customer wanted to use two major carriers for cellular diversity. Uh, furthermore, they wanted it active active so that uh, it could load balance to to make use of the best available bandwidth now as far as the affordability piece goes we partnered with solve networks uh, which can offer a data pool across two carriers which is which is a, a huge value add so that this particular customer who did not know which carrier would experience more usage or really didn't want to uh, manage it to that level of granularity could purchase data uh, in bulk and pull it across a multiple carriers. It's a, a very unique offering that, that added a lot of value. In addition, uh, this in, 
greatly simplified their billing because they didn't have to uh, maintain two account contacts for the carriers. Uh, they could have uh, very detailed troubleshooting and analysis for their cellular connection and uh, still pool their data. So they could essentially, in this case, they purchased half the data on each carrier and pooled it to meet the total data usage of a particular uh, mobile workforce. Um, so, so that was a big, big win for them, and uh, we, we were able to to uh, accomplish that using the Solve Networks offering. Uh, the Cradle Point itself, as I mentioned earlier, is a dual LTE modem. Uh, they have a feature called Smart WAN Selection, which really provides uh, additional smarts in the way of selecting a LTE uplink based on your key metrics, your latency, jitter, signal strength, or even data usage if, if you needed to fail over based on, you know, an overage structure or something like that. So this is just, uh, I, I think, some of the SD-WAN offerings uh, from Cradle Point, uh, you know, maybe the load balancing and the smart WAN selection. Uh, as Ken said earlier, it sort of scratches the surface. So uh, Ken, based on what I've said so far, what other SD-WAN kind of offerings come into play for the mobile workforce? Yeah, well, to put it in context, uh, let me talk about the fixed locations. There's a major transformation and transition in the IT industry towards SD-WAN for fixed locations like branch offices, retail stores, distribution centers, et cetera. And the, the concept is to leverage multiple internet connections or multiple WANs to, um, to be more efficient in terms of cost, performance, uh, reliability. And what we're seeing on the fixed location is most people are doing that with uh, by combining LTE with some sort of fixed could be MPLS private networking, or it could be broadband cable, and then letting applications decide, uh, set policies for application, which WAN you select. So if I'm a voice application, I might want to optimize on the WAN connection with the least latency and the least jitter. So that's on the on the fixed side, and there's a lot of companies in that space uh, really participating in that uh, transformation of the enterprise WAN. In the mobile space, this is where we have some unique capabilities because we're able to apply everything that we're doing at the fixed location in a mobile environment. So in this case, you have multiple WANs. In this case, it's two carriers. We also have the ability to do Wi-Fi as WAN, so we'll talk about that later. But the idea is you can leverage um, multiple connections, in this case, uh, one from carrier A, one from carrier B, and make intelligent choices of which application goes over which connection based on policies that you set and you control based on how you want to run your business. So it, it's a perfect use case for um, SD-WAN in these mobile environments. And again, this is uh, something that's unique to Cradle Point. Yeah, to touch on that Wi-Fi as WAN feature set, this is the depot Wi-Fi that the customer requested. Uh, even, even a concept as uh, simple as priority, WAN priority, in, in this customer's situation, the Wi-Fi is WAN is the highest priority link. If it is available, it is what is used. So really the conglomeration of all these features is what makes this an SD-WAN router. I, I can define when a connection is used, how it is used, how much it is used uh, via a variety of uh, different metrics. So it, it's been received very well. Uh, so that covers the uh, the uplink part, which is obviously the most crucial portion of a of a mobile deployment. I wanted to take some time and just work through some of the dashboards and and the screens from NetCloud Manager, because this is where our customer lives uh, as far as supporting these uh, deployments. So for those of you who haven't seen uh, what the NetCloud Manager offering looks like, I wanted to give you some you know perhaps eye candy to get to get more context uh, to see how that looks. So really, uh, when you log in, this is a dashboard view. Uh, it shows you uh, carrier connections, percentages, uh, online versus offline devices, devices that are inventory, data usage. As you can see, as you kind of work across the top, uh, you, you get a good strength, uh, a, a good sense of what technology, cellular technology your devices are connected using. Uh, as well as uh, this particular screenshot shows basically 
the gamut of Cradle Point's history uh, of, as far as devices connected and what types, but you could see if you had a deployment or different applications, you could see uh, how many device accounts are, are connected into your account. So, so this is the dashboard you see when you when you log in. Uh, speaking to the uh, zero touch and the firmware updates, uh, that's accomplished through a group construct and a device construct. What we're looking at here is the group construct. This is really uh, where you get the power of revision control and configuration control with both firmware and how you have your devices configured. Uh, so very uh, specifically, you can make groups for different applications or different uh, groups of devices based on how they are deployed to manage uh, all these configurations without ever having to log into the device locally. If the device is connected to the NetCloud Manager infrastructure, it can then receive any updates from uh, that are pushed down to it. Uh, next is the, the geo view, which is a very familiar uh, Google Maps overlay. You'll see that at different zoom levels, you can see how your assets are concentrated. Uh, furthermore, if you zoom in, uh, as you guys can see, there are some routers, icons that are exposed centrally. Maybe you, you'll see a couple in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, if you hover over any icon that is exposed like that, you'll get detailed up to the minute statistics, including GPS location, signal strength, uh, carrier connections, uh, all that stuff you can see in a map view if you're really, you know, especially for a mobile deployment. These are, this particular application was a mobile slash fixed because the trucks are deployed and then they, they sit around for a while. So it's not a truly uh, always in motion workforce, but uh, these assets are deployed all over, uh, all over geo uh, geographically, so it's it's good to see where your assets are deployed in this sort of view. And one thing I'd, I'd add is, in terms of customers who have these these distributed enterprises that have these remote locations, it's not feasible to have an IT person at each location. And many times, you know, these companies may have 20 locations. There may be 120, or there may be uh, we you know we have customers up to almost 50,000 deployments. And you need these tools to have a leveraged IT department in, in, in terms of being able to monitor the health, manage the configuration, upgrade the devices in, in, a, um, in a really easy cloud managed way. So this, this is a really key part of the value that I was talking about earlier beyond the hardware is the ability to provide this uh, remote management. A few more slides, um, you get to see WAN uh, uptime statistics and uh, obviously for LTE connections that are on and off, uh, this can vary, but you know, if a truck is deployed for a, a week at a time and is constantly powered on, you could get WAN statistics and uh, find out more information about uh, data usage, uh, furthermore about a specific truck or a group of trucks, however you have them organized in that cloud manager. This gives you a high level view of all your data usage. Uh, what, I, what I really like about this uh, view and what our customers really like is you can sync this uh, data usage calculation to your billing cycle. It gives you sort of a real time report of how your deployment fully, uh, all 50 trucks, are reporting in and how much data they're using on a given carrier so that you can optimize uh, your plan, make any adjustments, and hopefully get ahead of any over situations if, if there's a uh, anomalous kind of condition uh, out in the field that you need to address. So really powerful data usage insights as well as alerting. Uh, and we'll look at a little bit more at alerting in a second. Um, the client insights is really where they got the enterprise feature set for uh, for Wi-Fi, and uh, this this specific graphic is fo focused on uh, data usage. Uh, you can average out if you have any high you know top talkers or uh, loud talkers, somebody who's uh, consuming way too much data where they shouldn't be. Uh, so this graphic is focused on uh, data usage per client uh, over a period of time. You can really 
uh, do some you know good reporting to to kind of see how uh, your deployment is behaving. In addition, uh, I believe there's more features for application level insights. Is that is that right, Ken? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, that application visibility is is a key part of what our customers have been asking for as well. Not just who's using what, but what kind of applications are they using? Because obviously, this is a you know this is a business, and they want to make sure that it's being used for business. Exactly. So to, to touch on the alerts a little bit, uh, you have a, a very detailed set of alerts you could set up for basically either immediate uh, delivery of alerts to a set of users that you define, or it can be rolled up into just a log file uh, that exists in NetCloud Manager. So what we're looking at here is basically an alert log from NetCloud Manager. Uh, there's also an activity log, which is basically an audit log of all activity from users of the NetCloud Manager solution. So it tracks and lets you know which user logged in and pushed a config to what group so that there is a, a very high level of visibility as to how uh, the deployment has been managed and how it has uh, been changed over time by whatever uh, actors have access to the system. So hopefully that gave you a, a good view of, of uh, NetCloud Manager if you're not familiar with it. Uh, this is really what our customer was looking for as far as central management because they didn't really have to log into anything else to fully manage the networks at every one of their locations. So to kind of talk about some feedback from the uh, customer, uh, you'll see that Prior to this solution being implemented, sort of this initiative for, for um, highly available LTE everywhere, these senior engineers I referred to earlier were driving hundreds of thousands of miles for service calls just out of pure necessity. They were, you know, you're talking spanning a state as far as driving uh, on, a, on a fairly regular basis just because uh, you couldn't spend too much time troubleshooting over the phone if there wasn't progress being made. So with the solution deployed, we've heard that these truck rolls are, are basically eliminated and they're often avoided. So you save a significant expense, uh, significant time. It works very efficiently for their IT staff, that, which is limited. Uh, as Ken alluded to, it's, it's a very lean staff with a very uh, high level of skill set, but uh, they have to work efficiently to manage these deployments that are everywhere. Uh, a side benefit, uh, you'll see in the quotation there uh, from our customer, our specialists can provide troubleshooting and training from headquarters, home, or anywhere else. So really, the skill set of even these junior technicians is able to be elevated by having access uh, to these senior specialists at all times. Uh, they kind of move away from the break-fix model to a more proactive model where they have uh, insights into these uh, deployments at all times. They can see how the uh, oil well is acting, what the measurement equipment is reflecting, and make uh, modifications uh, earlier in the process to really uh, streamline production and, and provide a higher level of service to their customers. And that's a key point is, you know, we've talked a lot about how this uh, has benefited the IT department in terms of making sure the the network and the, the device is up. But one of the elements a lot of our customers uh, are really finding that is adding even more value than that is letting the operation technology folks, the OT folks, be able to have out-of-band access to the equipment that's in, you know, in this case, in a truck, uh, to be able to actually do remote management of the equipment itself through the cradle point router. So I think, you know, again, it's, uh, it opens up a lot of doors and that reduces even more truck rolls for people that need to uh, manage the equipment that's on the truck, not just the router. Uh, I would echo that, you know, this customer has, has, like I said, they've been an early adopter and they've really latched on to a lot of the, you know, uh, more advanced feature sets of CradlePoint. That being said, there's still plenty that we can grow into. If the requirements change, we, we hear from them fairly often. If, if something needs to be modified or optimized, we can 
Uh, we haven't run into a scenario where we haven't been able to implement a change or an improvement uh, using another uh, Cradle Point Net Cloud feature set. Um, so to kind of wrap things up, you know, from my standpoint, uh, this project, uh, I, I've been able to work it from uh, beginning to the ongoing state where we're at. It's not over. It's been very rewarding because uh, they've, this particular customer has been a great to work with. They've uh, really, they really had a list of requirements, which engineers love, uh, and we were able to meet all those requirements. So we, we got to partner with them, uh, come alongside them, and uh, hear the requirements and uh, assist them with initial deployment, testing, and now you know we are involved in operations, logistics, and and ongoing management uh, with 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 this entire deployment. So they really lean on us for our cradle point expertise, uh, and uh, they can work more efficiently with their staff to to troubleshoot the well site. Um, you know, although they are well versed in the uh, cradle point solution, uh, it's not you know, their core competencies. So they can partner with us to uh, to assist them there. So it's been a, a really uh, fun project to see from, from start to, you know, as it progresses uh, into the future. Uh, and what we also were able to do with Solve Networks to provide end-to-end -end insight on the cellular data uh, connection was 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 really good. We were able to uh, optimize their, their billing uh, provide them a more efficient usage of data without having them have to micromanage uh, disparate bills uh, and, and you know separate logins and really systems that didn't really uh, communicate with one another. So that uh, their end goal was to have a a cohesive solution that was affordable and efficient for for their business operations. So when we partnered with uh, that dual carrier so solution with Solve Networks, we were able to accomplish that. So that that really all I had from a uh, uh, presentation standpoint. Uh, I don't know if Kenny, if you had anything to add, or if if we have some questions uh, to go uh, to go from the audience, we could we could go there. Yeah, I just uh, I just uh, like to thank you for doing a wonderful job of presenting this use case. I mean, we love um, use cases and we love working with customers because everyone has different needs. I think, you know, from a networking standpoint, there are some common challenges everyone has on the connectivity side, but when you can provide an end customer with secure, reliable connectivity, it really enables them to innovate at the edge. And, and uh, I love these examples of companies like this where they, they are able to do a lot of innovation at the edge in their area of expertise uh, because they have that secure, reliable connectivity. All right, great. Well, and with that, let's get to the Q&A. <clears throat> As a reminder, please submit any questions you'd like us to answer via the Zoom platform and indicate the panelists towards whom you're directing them, if applicable. Uh, first one uh, for Ken. I've heard a lot about NetCloud Perimeter. What is that? And is that the same as NetCloud Manager? It's a very good question. Uh, NetCloud is the branding that we apply to uh, really all of our software, whether it's the software in the router or the software in the cloud. NetCloud Manager and NetCloud Perimeter have, have different functionality. NetCloud Manager is really what we walk through in this presentation. It's how do uh, customers manage, uh, monitor the health of their devices, the configuration, uh, data usage uh, monitoring, as well as all the analytics of both clients and uh, users and applications. NetCloud Perimeter is a, it's an overlay private networking solution that really takes the complexity out of setting up private networks, uh, micro segments for individual applications. And so it's a, uh, without going into a lot of detail, it's a host-based architecture. So there's an actual client that goes into the Internet of Things device, the IoT device, or into the application that's able to put that onto a, uh, a private network that is completely hidden from the outside world and able to isolate those devices so that they only talk to the devices that you want. And enterprise love that, uh, uh, you know, to, to create those secure networks overlaid on top of their existing physical network. So yes, it is different. All right, great. Uh, another one for Ken. 
How do Cradle Point's SD WAN offerings compete in the connected vehicle market? Well, as I said before, the SD WAN capability most uh, people are tracking it or following it in, in uh, branch and retail stores, branch offices and retail stores. For vehicles, it's fabulous because it, it gives you the same capability of having treating multiple internet connections to a vehicle as a, as a virtual connection and being able to optimize on those multiple connections however you want. And it could be optimized for reliability, it could be optimized for cost, could be optimized for performance. And uh, if you have critical key applications, uh, you might steer them over one internet connection and try to keep all the other traffic over a different internet connection, if you, you know, again, as part of your optimization process. So we, we see that um, going forward, SD-WAN is going to be uh, a really critical part of any connected uh, solution like what we did in the case study. Thanks. This one's for Steven. What other technologies were you referring to in the NetCloud ecosystem? Um, okay, so yeah, in that last slide, you know, I said as the customer has levied different requirements, we've uh, we've kind of reached into the tool the toolkit to to uh, meet those requirements. So, but we haven't really scratched the surface. In in my mind, there's a whole lot of powerful tools. Uh, Perimeter, I think Ken just talked about Perimeter is is uh, next level when it comes to SD WAN. Uh, that is. Uh, that's one we haven't implemented on this particular project, although there has been talk of, you know, isolating a camera network or a, a vendor network for uh, third party vendors to maintain their OEM equipment that all could be made possible with uh, perimeter. So we're exploring options like that. Um, in addition, you know, there's a feature called remote connect where uh, essentially you can through NetCloud manager establish a live HTTP or HTTPS Telnet session to a piece of equipment on the LAN behind a cradle point device. So when it comes to troubleshooting devices or dealing with uh, you know devices that present a web interface for for troubleshooting or configuration, you can do that uh, without VPN, without being uh, connected uh, locally. You can do that strictly through NetCloud Manager. You can do things like SSH uh, directly to the modem. Uh, so you can get a lot of uh, additional power out of the NetCloud ecosystem like that. Uh, furthermore, there's APIs to draw from, from NetCloud. You could build it into other dashboarding systems. So really there's a whole lot of uh, horsepower left untapped right now with, uh, with our current deployment, but a whole lot of room to grow. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And Steven, what happens when you have communications disconnect? Uh, does the system have to reboot? And if not, what happens? Uh, no. So obviously, if you're talking about communications disconnect as, as far as LTE uplink uh, with, with any router, if you lose your uplink, you obviously lose your connection to uh, the outside world uh, as far as the WAN connection goes. But the, the device itself does not require a connection to NetCloud Manager to run. Uh, it, when it has an uplink, it will check in and be uh, able to be controlled and configured from NetCloud Manager, but it can operate as a local area network, uh, it would still provide uh, that vehicle area network if devices on the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi or computers within the truck needed to communicate to one another, that whole network stays up. So there's no uh, you know, auto reboot or anything that, that comes from a uh, communications disconnect. Awesome, thanks Steven. Another one for you, how difficult was it for the customer to do all the configuration or did they have to do all the configuration? So that's where they kind of leaned on us a little bit, uh, which which we which we enjoy. You know, we we have an engineering staff that uh, likes uh, these kinds of projects. We we partner with our customers all the time uh, to help them with this because, as I mentioned, it's not always their core competency. Uh, and and familiar, you know, in addition, we have really high level familiarity with the products that we represent, so that we 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 take great pride in specializing in them. So, uh, you know, they might consult us on on can this feature be done uh, depending on the level of interest they might want to know how it's done but uh, we, we basically handled all the configuration uh, we used the group the, uh, the group configuration construct 
to basically uh, put all their like devices into a group, and then we would push um, you know exclusive changes to particular devices where they where they happen to differ, like in the case of a local area network definition or or, or a login here or there. Uh, so you you basically make a common set of configurations via the group construct, and then you layer on unique uh, identifiers or or settings via the device construct. So we did uh, most of the configuration, and, and this particular customer likes it that way. Uh, they they like to lean on us because uh, we have it all well documented. We have a, a team of people who are familiar with it, so that we can troubleshoot, um, you know, uh, really any aspect of it or improve it. Uh, so, so they leaned on us heavily there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, back to Ken on this one. Is the IBR 1700 the replacement for the IBR 900 series? Uh, I would say yes and no. It depends on the application. But for vehicles in particular, we, we strongly recommend the 1700. We've added some capabilities to that that, um, uh, you know, like accelerometers, for example. So you can start doing... Um, inertia-based uh, dead reckoning if you lose your GPS signal. We have the ability, a special interface for monitoring voltage, which is important in vehicles. Uh, it, a lot of times, not just the, the vehicle of the battery, but sometimes the equipment is powered by a separate battery. And the built-in capability of having the dual modems. I think with the 900, uh, you also have that ability, but it's through um, a separate accessory dock. So. The 1700, uh, actually, I love it. I personally did the first testing pre-release uh, outside of Cradle Point in, uh, in a race car at a racetrack, and we were using it to uh, adjust, uh, do live video broadcasts of a, of a car going very, very fast, and, and it's a great product for that, those kind of applications. Awesome. Thank you so much. Back to Steven. It seems like you have a lot of RF on the truck. How do you handle the antennas for this application? That is true. Um, you know, with the 1700, uh, I believe there are three separate radios, each requiring, uh, for Wi-Fi, requiring uh, two antennas apiece. There's a GPS antenna. Uh, once it gets it up to seven, there's also four LTE antennas. So we're up to 11 uh, RF connections that are on the 1700. So Cradle Point obviously has their offering of uh, antennas uh, that that work with this solution. So there, there is a uh, multi uh, all-in-one antenna or a couple of antennas that can split up the Wi-Fi uh, and the cellular slash GPS load. So there are uh, absolutely best practices in pairing uh, these vehicle antennas, which are outdoor, you know, rugged, uh, sort of vehicle mounted antennas, uh, especially when you're talking an 11 in one or 11 in two form factor. Uh, so, uh, you know, as far as handling it, we, you know, there's, there's the appropriate separation, but there are, uh, obvious recommendations as to which antennas work best with the IBR 1700 series. And just to add to that, this is an area where we have developed a good ecosystem of third-party vendors who have really innovated around specific use cases. And some of the antennas designed for vehicles are, are the ones where you permanently attach them by drilling holes. Some of them are magnetic mount. This customer that we talked about has fixed locations as well. And there's a whole additional, um, for fixed locations, you have the flexibility of having like a high-powered Yagi 30 dB directional antenna because you know where the cell towers are and you can uh, put it up on a mast and point it at a cell tower and just get enormous range out of that that you wouldn't get with a, you know, a USB modem stick with that miniature antenna. So it really is, depends on the application. You've got a lot of choices for how to optimize that. Okay, great. Well, uh, I think that's a good place to wrap up um, a little bit early. Um, definitely present any questions now if you have any. Um, if not, uh, definitely want to thank our presenters so much for spending time with us today, for all of you audience members as well partic for participating in this event. Again, you'll be receiving an email with a link to the on-demand version of the presentation as well as the webinar slides once that's available after this today. Um, take care, and uh, we'll talk with you all soon. Thanks so much.